What's going on, everyone? As many of you already know, a lot has happened over the world over this past weekend. Iran launched a pretty big attack against Israel, and the market uh, has already been selling off heading into this event. On Friday, 92% of stocks in the S&P 500 finished in the red. That includes big tech powerhouses like NVIDIA, Microsoft, Google, Meta, Amazon, Tesla, and others. And it was just a bloodbath. 92% of stocks in the S&P 500 were red. And this is happening at a time where even Bitcoin is uh, pulling back a decent amount. In today's video, we're going to cover everything you need to know about this uh, Israel, Iran, U.S., every global situation involved with this event as well as some important stocks to watch for this week. Earnings season is back in action. Gold prices have been going crazy and we have a lot to talk about and there's a lot of opportunity associated with these geopolitical events. We're even going to look back and see what happened when Russia invaded Ukraine back in 2022 and how the market responded to that. But with that being said, Tom, let's jump right into today's episode. Yeah, it was not a good day on Friday, especially for the bulls out there in the market. But I will say this, Mike, we're starting to see the volatility index increase a ton. And as in the short term, looking at it on the daily chart, it actually got all the way up to the top of the trend line right around 19 to 1920 there on the actual VIX chart. And this is awesome for options traders, right? This is showing that volatility is increasing and that's actually going to increase the moves in the market. We saw a big drop out of the S&P 500 on Friday. Ended up pulling back only 1.38%. But Mike, you saying that there were over 90% of stocks red, I mean, that is a pretty big statement out of the S&P 500. JP Morgan and some of the banks had some bad earnings. But I think the big thing was everybody's waiting to see what happened in the Middle East. And it looks like Iran did actually end up attacking Israel. And at the end of the day, it looks like they actually uh, intercepted many of the drones. Uh, I think they said like 99% of them and even other countries like the U.S., U.K., and Jordan helped out. Exactly. So like, here's the good thing. Uh, the attack was, uh, you know, is Israel protected themselves very well there and there wasn't really any damage. But the bigger concern at hand is that Israel is going to retaliate back to Iran and then Iran's like, hey, you know, if you, if, hey, Israel, if you retaliate back to us, then we're going to retaliate back to you in an even bigger way. So it's like this giant, never ending fight where the conflict gets worse and worse and worse and worse. And that, more than anything else, is the biggest concern with the market here. The last thing we want is this um, event, this, 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 this conflict that just gets worse and worse and worse, right? So that is a big risk here. And one thing that's, uh, that, that, that is just ser a serious risk going forward in the market and the world right now. One thing that I thought was very interesting in like a short-term perspective, though, is when we go back to the charts on the S&P 500, when Russia invaded Ukraine back in February of 2022, at first, the market gapped down quite a bit. It was on February 24th of 2022 for the SPY. We saw a giant gap down at first, but then a giant green candle uh, is what you know, finished that day and the market ended up holding up just fine for like the couple for the, you know, next couple weeks to follow. It ended up fading lower as the year went on, but you know, the initial reaction wasn't all that bad. What we do see a lot of times when we have like big events like this is if the uh, market's reaction initially is, uh, if it holds strong, then that doesn't really bring in the giant overwhelming like uh, selling pressure, right? Where we see like a giant snowball down. Um, you know, if, if the market holds strong, then the market can continue to hold stronger just like it did in 2022. On the other hand, if when the market opens tomorrow, if it's just a complete bloodbath and everyone is just, you could say, slapping the bid and a bunch of selling pressure just keeps on coming in, that is where things can get very crazy very quickly. But normally it's one of two situations. Either the market holds strong and it begets more strength or it gets really weak and it uh, begets even more selling pressure in a very nasty way. Yeah, exactly. And it's, you know, it's not like we're going to sit here and say that like the, it was such a great year, you know, with the Ukrainian crisis going on. Like you can still see that, like, I would say the overall economic implications of that still caused like a pretty bad year there in the stock market overall. But at the end of the day, that first initial move 
didn't really go down as much as people thought. And I couldn't even believe that short-term uptrend all the way up to like 458 there on the SPY. So that's definitely something to keep in mind, Mike. And, you know, I know that everybody's going to be watching this, right? Crude oil right now. That's going to be the big topic that I think a lot of options traders are going to be looking at too, like call options on Zom, Oxy, and others. But just be a little bit wary. On Friday, they actually followed the market down quite a bit. Those were some pretty volatile red candles there. Now, that doesn't mean that this will continue into next week, but I'm definitely going to be monitoring these oil stocks for more volatility coming in, especially just given that geopolitical risk considering the region that this is in. Exactly. So great stuff there, Tom. But uh, another asset that has been all over the place is Bitcoin. You know, it's been doing very well over the past couple months. But as soon as this uh, attack happened in the Middle East, uh, a lot of selling pressure came in pretty quickly. But Bitcoin is holding up just fine. It's right around that like $65,000 level. But um, it has fallen quite a bit from its uh, recent highs of, I guess you could say, you know, around like $72,000. Yeah, it really has. That's a pretty decent move down. And like you said, over the weekend, that was a pretty bad move too. Like you look on Friday night heading into Saturday and then on Saturday, that drop from like 67,000 all the way down to like 61,400 was pretty rough too. So I'm definitely going to keep my eyes on Bitcoin, especially with the having event that's coming up. So essentially the having event's going to be this Friday, April 19th, as long as everything keeps going the way that it is now, once the number of 840,000 blocks is reached, then that having event will happen but obviously we have to get there so we'll see how this countdown goes mike but as of now they're looking at friday april 19th so it uh, looks like they're even looking at 705 p.m cdt so uh <laughs> watch for that on friday night after the market close of course right they're gonna do this while the market's closed so we can't play coinbase <laughs> all righty so uh you know we talked a lot about bitcoin talked a decent amount about oil but we also have to hit on what's happening with gold prices right now so gold prices have been exploding to the upside over the past couple of weeks and gold had such a great start on Friday, but it ended up having a pretty monster-sized pullback, and uh, this is happening as the dollar is starting to increase. So what you could see is, is if we look at a chart of the dollar, it's having a pretty explosive move to the upside in the short term, which just it definitely makes it a lot harder for you know the price of gold to uh, rise higher. Yeah, it really does. And it, I'm not going to sit here and say that like the dollar and gold, that it's going to be like an, an exact inverse of each other, right? Like a lot of people like to say every time the dollar goes up, gold drops or every time gold goes up, you know, the dollar ends up falling, etc. Uh, that's really not the case all the time. But we do know, though, that the dollar moving up does put pressure on gold. And with I would say is that with the overall market falling as much as it did Friday, I think some of that selling pressure might have even leaked over into gold, which is at all-time highs right now. Like Gold has been going up with the market fairly well lately, although it's been holding up a lot higher here in the short term. But on, over, on the overall uptrend, it's been doing pretty good with the market. So I don't know. I think there's a combination of a few things with gold, but just wait till the futures market opens up tonight. I think that with what's going on in the Middle East, we might see gold start to pop back a little bit. Yep, we shall see. But Tom, we also have to talk about what's going on with earnings season. The banks kicked it off on Friday and it surely wasn't a good start. Like JP Morgan, for example, was down six and a half percent. So what's on the lineup for this week? Yeah, JP Morgan was rough there. We even have some more banks earlier in the week this week. So on Monday, we have Goldman Sachs reporting before market open with Charles Schwab. Thanks a lot for buying TD, Schwab. Uh, <laughs> going on to Tuesday, we got Bank of America, Johnson & Johnson, UNH, Morgan Stanley, another bank, PNC, uh, United Airlines, and After Hours. It's a loaded one this week, guys, compared to what we've been seeing lately with the uh, earnings season finally kicking back off. LVS Wednesday after close. Thursday, we have Taiwan Semiconductors, one of the biggest chip stocks out there. So definitely watch that one. And then Netflix as well. I think for me, Mike, this week, Thursday has to be the big day with TSMC and Netflix. All right, Tom, pick one stock. What's what's What are you watching the most? Uh, I, I got to go Taiwan Semiconductors here. I, I hate to say it, Netflix, but the chip stocks are beating you out in the short term here. <laughs> I'll give it to you for sure. I'm gonna I'm definitely going to watch Netflix the closest this week. Um, it has had such a crazy move over the past couple of years where it ended up uh, moving higher from like $165 a share all the way up to like $635 a share. So we'll see how strong it could uh, continue to hold up. And Tom, I can't even... 
believe I'm saying this, but Netflix is actually getting closer to its all-time high of around $700 a share that it made back in November of 2021. So that's a very quick recovery um, over like the past couple of years. It really is, especially like whenever you consider just the magnitude of that drop, like on a percentage basis, it's like right around a 76% pullback there. And then it recovered up 290% already. I mean, the only thing that I've seen better in the short term is maybe in uh, NVIDIA and then of course Meta's recovery, but it's been pretty good for Netflix. You can see on the daily chart, they've been holding up good around highs, but I'm wondering in the short term, like if we start to see like SPY and the overall market pull back, Netflix will probably end up pulling back a little bit too, but just keep in mind these earnings though will obviously be their own event. Yep. All right. Good stuff there. And then luckily the this week's economic schedule is pretty light, which I am actually happy for because it can just let us focus more on the earnings season and just like the price action overall. Yeah, I was looking through it. There's a couple things. Monday, we do have retail sales. Uh, Tuesday, building permits. Looks like as we go throughout the week, initial jobless claims on Thursday. But really, besides that, Mike, uh, there's some Fed speakers mixed in. Those might end up end it, those might end up moving the market a little bit. But uh, at the end of the day, nothing's as crazy as the earnings this week. And then obviously the event over with Israel. That's going to be the I think the main talk of the market here. Sounds great. Well, let's get right into some. The fun stuff for tomorrow, which are some setups. A stock I'm watching very closely is KTOS. We've been talking a lot about this stock in the short term. It is a defense stock, and as you can imagine, given the rising tensions and escalations, especially in the Middle East right now, defense stocks have a lot to gain. All those missiles that are fired uh, definitely uh, benefit these companies, to say the least. But looking at KTOS, there was recently a big money trade on this one that we covered um, about a week ago. And the big money just keeps adding more and more to their position. They are holding the 20 strike call options that expire on July 19th of 2024. Um, you know, these call options are close to the money. They have some time to them. The stock is starting to move up a little bit in the short term. And overall, it's just a stock that I think is worth watching very closely, especially if we start to see a move higher with this one. Um, we might see a, you know, a decent sized breakout. So I'm watching it very closely to the upside in the short term, but something very important that's worth noting is like I am not like looking at this stock to move up tomorrow it's more something that you know can happen over the course of multiple days and even multiple weeks so um, the July 19th expiration is uh, you know at like the soonest expiration that should be traded in my opinion yeah, like you definitely got to give this one some time, Mike, and maybe even giving it more time than July might even be good too. Would you uh, maybe say that? Yes, absolutely. You can never go wrong with buying more time. You never know what's going to happen, and it's always good to have that extra time in your portfolio. Yeah, like if this just chops around down here, you're going to want that time. So just make sure you guys play it good like that. But my first play is going into AMD, and this one's not going to make a lot of people happy in the short term, Mike. Uh, I can tell that right off the bat. There was actually a big money play on AMD puts out to October on April 4th of 2024. Looks like that's starting to do pretty well here as AMD is finally starting to get down a little bit here on the daily. It went flat for like four to five days, but on Friday finally started to break through support. So in the short term, I'm actually watching a huge area coming up right around $160. You guys can see it right here on the book map, which is like x-ray vision. Uh, for everyone who, watch, who watches the channel often, we've been talking about this a lot. Essentially, there's a bunch of shares stacked up at 160. And whenever you go to the chart, it just lines up there as support. So generally, you know that a lot of buyers are there anyways. And we have it here right on the book map to confirm. So let's go, Mike. I'm going to be watching this 160 level all week. If we see a breakdown, I'm going to watch for the opportunities. You guys could even make an alert there and then uh, maybe have some put options ready just for the, uh, for the quick breakdown. There we go. All right. Another stock I'm watching pretty closely in the short term is JP Morgan and it's to the downside. So they uh, did have a pretty negative drop on their earnings report. Um, it's never a good sign to see. They are a powerhouse in the uh, financial industry. But, uh, you know, to see this much uh, selling pressure come in, uh, especially to kick off earnings season while we're also seeing these uh other events happening around the world it just isn't the great sign. So I am looking at this for a short term earnings continuation to the downside. I could see it. I mean, that daily chart looks rough. The intraday chart looks pretty rough too. I could see a short term move uh, or short short term continuation too. maybe move down to like 180 or less. But I really like these banks down, Mike, in the short term. I think it's 
pretty interesting considering how much they've ran up recently. Uh, my next play is another one that isn't necessarily a play for tomorrow, but I am watching this stock, and that is Tilray. Uh, it's been pulling back quite a bit. It's getting closer to support again. It could be good off this bottom area of support. If, you, uh, if you're somebody that's been looking to get shares and you were pissed that you missed it last time, it was under $2. Hey, we're sitting at $1.80 again. Uh, there's a big support around that $1.60 mark. So I'm going to be watching the support carefully over the next week to two weeks. If we end up seeing the support hold up, uh, I'll probably end up up grabbing some more shares down here and then continue to hold them as we start to see more legalization news just do realize that these weed stocks are risky if you do play or let's say grab shares of this don't be too I, I would say don't over leverage them don't put too much money on it at the end of the day they are very risky and I honestly, Mike, uh, it's something for me. I just buy it and forget it. You know, I think that's the best way to go with these because we really need that good legalization news to happen. Yeah, with the weed stocks, if you can't handle the heat, then get out of the kitchen. You know, it's that simple with these <laughs> stocks. They're some of the craziest stocks in the market, and you have to treat them in that way. <laughs> you know, just be smart about them. But good stuff there, Tom. And let's jump right into the momentum plays for tomorrow. And with the first one, we have SMH. To the downside. Yeah, SMH was pretty rough on Friday, and we're actually looking at a big support in the short term right at 220. But the low of last week was right around 219.50. So if we break under that, then go ahead and eye up those puts. All right, with the next one, we have Meta also to the downside. Yeah, pretty rough pullback Friday as well. Big support around 506. So if we break under 506, then eye up those puts. All right, and then with the last one, we have Amazon for both directions. Yeah, Amazon's actually been holding up pretty well lately. Uh, if, they're, if they could end up breaking back above 189.50, I guess you could almost say just 190 at that point, then go ahead and look at calls. But if they end up falling under 184, then go ahead and eye up puts to the downside. And I really like that 184 support. All right, so we have the downside level for puts for Amazon. We have the upside level for calls. Don't forget about the downside level with Meta and SMH as well. These three stocks are on watch for potential day trades tomorrow if and only if they break through the levels Tom listed. We are looking for strong, consistent, powerful price action with these stocks, and uh, that's the main thing with them. So keep them close on watch, but we can't forget about the big money trade from Friday either. So on Friday, we saw $656,000 go into the JP Morgan 190 strike put options that expire on August 16th of 2024. Looking at JP Morgan, again, the earnings reaction certainly wasn't the best. These put options are in the money. They already have a decent amount of time to them. It's a $656,000 trade. Lots of volume came in as well. The stock is already up quite a bit over the past couple of months, and it's definitely not looking bad. So a uh, very interesting setup. I think so too, and I like it that it's the 190 kind of in the money a little bit here. I know a lot of people probably won't want to go for that strike, but it's a lot safer, and it goes out to August too. So, you know, let's say that there is like a short-term pullback back up and then a, a bigger move down, you'll be in for that larger drop. And one thing I noticed, Mike, in the short term is, you know, we're seeing banks start to pull back. We're also seeing the yields creep a little higher too. So I think that could put some more negative pressure here on the banks in the short term. But we'll see uh, exactly how the... Uh, overall macroeconomic situation plays out there but i definitely like this down on the banks in the short term especially just looking at the scope of the move to the upside right like jp morgan was up 47 percent. just look at the extent of it like for a couple months there uh, early this year and at the end of last year i mean that uptrend was one of the best uptrends i've ever seen almost out of jp morgan <laughs> seriously that thing did not pull back it just kept going higher and higher and higher and higher and it was a phenomenal move it was. I mean, look at all the green candles there, guys. That was nuts. But yeah, just keep keep your eyes on the JP Morgan puts. I could see more potential movement to the downside there. And, uh, you know, I hate to say it, Mike, but we've been talking a lot, a lot about a lot of downside moves this video. I think the bulls are going to start to uh, be upset with us. But one thing I'm going to say, Mike, is you mentioned JP Morgan down for your play. Uh, would you recommend these puts for the longer term? Or do you think like a, a shorter term play would still be a little better here? Uh, you know, it, I, I have to stick with the, the, the options that have more time to them, you know, especially given everything we have going on in the world. It's just 
always is nice to have, you know, those options that have a lot of time to them because when you go in the short term, like any new event can just kind of like throw off the position. So, you know, when in doubt with options, the more time you buy and the deeper in the money you go, just the better it is. Yeah, definitely. More time, the better. And Mike, I think I need to get a shirt made for uh, for the Tilray comment earlier. <laughs> uh, <laughs> if you can't handle the heat, get out of the kitchen. I think that one would sell uh, really, really well. But let's go this week, guys. You know, there's a lot on the plate. I'm still watching oil as well. Very, very closely, Mike, especially with what's going on all across the world. And imagine that uh, I would imagine that some of these events will even impact the banks, too, a little bit. Obviously, you know, uh, macroeconomic conditions definitely do. The only thing I'm concerned about, Tom, is as we look at the market right now, right, it has pulled back a little bit from its highs. And I remember last week we saw like a little bit, pull, a little small pullback, and there were people who were acting as if the market was down 10% in a day, <laughs> right? Like just something extreme. Guys, the market has been extremely bullish over the past couple of months and it's been awesome, right? But make sure you are not over leveraged. The market cannot just go up every single day. Pullbacks are normal, healthy, and they are expected. So make sure when they happen, you are in a position that will not get obliterated because of that pullback. Trade smart. Let's have a great week. Make sure your risk is under control. Follow the money as usual and you know deploy good, healthy trading habits. Let's make this week a great one. And it's an exciting time to be a trader. We've said that many times over the uh, past couple of weeks but it is so true. Uh, whether we have big moves up or down doesn't matter, right? As long as you position yourself in a, in a good way, that's the main thing. Uh, what sucks in terms of trading is like when you have years like 2017 where the market doesn't really move up all that much on a day-by-day -day basis. It's just super slow, boring, and more choppy than anything else. That is not the case right now. We have good volatility. We have good movement, and uh, it's important to strike on that uh, when it is uh, presented by the market. So let's have a great week. For those of you who are in the short-term trading, make sure, make sure to check out the Stocked Up Trading Floor. You can chat with Tom and myself all day long during the trading day. You get full access to our army of bots, access to the big money trades, and it's the spot to be if you're in the short-term trading. Come join us. Use coupon code Big Money to save big with the yearly plan. We don't do uh, coupon code sales often, but uh, come join us. It'll be that first link in the description in the comments down below. And then let's also give a giant shout out to today's member of the day, Connie, who said, looks like I've just made my first significant profit since joining and uh, posted their uh, nice trades there. So great job, Connie, and keep up all of the great work. And besides that, thank you all so much for watching, and let's make this week a great one.